We're 24 hours away from the MLB's Field of Dreams game. The Cincinnati Reds face off against the Chicago Cubs in the second major league game ever to be played in Dyersville, Iowa. And that is where sports anchor Marshall Kransky is live for us tonight. Marshall, why does it make sense for the Reds to play in this game? I feel like I know the answer, but I cannot wait to see this story. The movie Field of Dreams largely focuses on the idea of second chances. One of the main characters who gets a second chance is the ghost of White Sox legend Shoeless Joe Jackson. Jackson, Jackson, along with his seven teammates on the White Sox, were permanently banned from baseball after accepting money to intentionally lose the 1919 World Series, largely known as the biggest scandal in sports history. And all of that drama, that happened in Cincinnati. Runners on second and third, nobody out. The year, 1919. Two years before baseball was even broadcast on the radio. The Cincinnati Reds won their first World Series. Ed Roush, Heine Groh, the heroes of the 1919 World Champs, immortalized in the Reds Hall of Fame, but... A great Reds team has been overshadowed over history. Overshadowed by the White Sox accepting bribes to intentionally lose the World Series, more commonly known as the Black Sox scandal, with controversy of the legendary Shoeless Joe Jackson in the center of it. Building this myth around Shoeless Joe, and then of course, W.P. Kinsella took that to a whole new level uh, with his book. That book that later turned into the film Field of Dreams, amplifying the belief that Jackson was innocent. Joe, Joe, he has what, 300 something batting average, Creed has no errors, has the only home run in the entire series. Incredible stats, you look up and down, sure he took money, but he did not throw anything. The Reds are ready to clinch, two outs, ninth inning of game eight, Shoeless Joe Jackson grounds out to second base for the last out of the series, and again, that's the ball he hit for the very last out of the most notorious World Series in baseball history. The most notorious moment in baseball history. And a lot of this did unfold right here in Cincinnati. Specifically, downtown on the corner of 4th and Vine. This would have been site of the Sinton Hotel. Okay. Uh, and the Sinton Hotel played great importance to the 1919 World Series. This is where uh, this is where the White Sox stayed during the series. In a glorified broom closet. Abe Attell was a former lightweight boxing champion. He was also the known bag man for Arnold Rothstein, New York gangster who was behind fixing the entire World Series. So he has all those players come into the room for a little meeting before game one. The fix was on. After the first game, you have Abe Attell in here waving, waving $1,000 bills which Peel carried at that time, taking all the bets he could take on the Reds. Were they actually given the cash here? Yeah, I think he was just exchanging. Kind of taking it to a level that I think is is uh, not as well known. One of the things everyone talks about the White Sox involvement in gambling from that World Series. There's a lot of rumors that the Reds were involved in that too. We do know that the Reds were approached by gamblers and um, our understanding is that they were very steadfast and consistent and pretty emotional in turning those overtures away. Um, so they, they did not want any part of it. That's our understanding of how that unfolded. Among baseball fans, the 1919 World Series champs will forever have an asterisk, while Shoeless Joe stuck in purgatory in Dyersville, Iowa. At least according to Field of Dreams. <laughs> Some might believe that the film Field of Dreams and this area right here symbolizes purgatory. However, this week, it feels a whole lot more like heaven. Tomorrow, when the Reds and Cubs play, they'll be wearing those 1919 uniforms that you saw there, just a little more high tech with better breathability for the players when it comes to the material. Live in Dyersville, Iowa, Marshall Kramsky, WCPO 9 Sports.